What's going on guys, Brunson 31 appreciate you guys tuning in. So, I recently uploaded a video called The Recon, and essentially it's just a short film about a solo reconnaissance mission and a notional conflict against a notional enemy. And a lot of the comments I saw on that video were pertaining to the web gear I was wearing. So I thought it'd be a good video just to give you guys an up close look at my web equipment. This isn't gonna be a full blown breakdown of all the little minute things I was carrying or do carry on my web gear. This is just gonna be a quick overview of this web equipment so that you guys get a general idea of the type of web equipment I'm wearing and how it's set up, okay? Uh, so just how I got to this point and why I chose this uh, web gear. So if you guys have been watching my channel for any amount of time, you know I do a lot of training at the One Shepherd Leadership Institute as well as SNS Training Solutions. And uh, for the past several semesters, I've been rocking this thing right here. This is uh, LBV88 in OD Green. You know, typically you're going to find these in, in woodland camouflage, uh, but at the One Shepherd Leadership Institute, all your gear needs to be OD green. And the reason for that is because, you know, at the One Shepherd Leadership Institute, there's two different uniforms. There's a woodland uniform like the one I'm wearing right now, and then the uh, Op 4 side usually wears straight, solid OD green. Uh, so they want your gear to be OD green so that you can wear it with both utility uniforms. Um, this past year at Winter Forge, uh, which is hosted by SNS Training Solutions, not One Shepherd, but it was going to be a training, a joint training venture. Uh, I was going to be on the SNS side, and the SNS uniform is multicam. And I think that uh, Coyote goes better with multicam, so I wanted to get some Coyote gear to wear at that Winter Forge training event, this last one that we did. And uh, when I was looking online, I'm a big fan of surplus equipment, guys. You know, surplus gear. You can get, uh, usually at a decent price, very top quality uh, gear. And a lot of that gear is made by Eagle, Eagle Industries. Eagle Industries has kind of been the forerunner for U.S. Uh, servicemen infantry equipment for, for a long time now, at least, at least during the GWAT. Um, so generally speaking, when you see Eagle Industries gear, brand gear, it's pretty good stuff. And uh, you can usually get it you know, at, a, at a good market value. So one of the things I came across was this, and this is the Eagle Industries H harness. Uh, the actual nomenclature on it, on this tag here says uh, HG-VS-MS- and then whatever the color, this one says uh, KH, and this one says RG. I'm assuming that's for uh, Ranger Green. And then underneath that it says H harness, okay? So when I saw this on, uh, I think it was eBay, it looked pretty good, and uh, I've always been a big fan of, you know, the H, harness type suspenders and I thought this was going to be an excellent um, snag and it, it, I wanted to get it. It was cheap. I can't remember what I paid for it but it was reasonable maybe 40 or 50 bucks and uh, I thought it had, was going to help facilitate carrying all the traditional stuff that I normally carry on my web, my, uh, web equipment. So you know I went ahead and bought it and I wore it this one in particular to the Winter Forge training event and I made sure all my gear was, uh, you know, coyote. And guys, I absolutely loved it. All right, I absolutely loved it. And uh, we'll get in closer to look at this gear here in a second for you guys. But I loved it so much, I wanted to get a uh, OD dominant, you know, set of it so that I could wear this at One Shepherd. So I could wear this in the, uh, you know, the fall, in the winter at SNS Training Solutions Winter Four Training Events, and then I could wear this OD set when I go to One Shepherd which you know, traditionally those semesters are in the uh, spring and summer. So uh, without further ado, let's go ahead and get an up-close look and we'll start talking about this gear. All right, up-close look at this web gear, okay? So uh, nothing much to it, guys. It just has a traditional you know, H-strap harness uh, style, which I really like. And uh, this equipment is, uh, you know, comes kind of large. And I think that's the biggest criticism of this gear is people get it and they're like, man, this thing's way too big for me. How does it fit? And then all you have to do is remove this back panel here and collapse this down. And what I mean by that is on the back here, you guys can see they have buckles, okay? So you can remove this back panel. And then this, each side here would attach to these buckles and then these would just attach to each other, removing this back side, all right? So that would, that would uh, make this whole web equipment a lot smaller and fit more comfortably on smaller people. Um, I'm a larger stature guy, so even with all these buckles tightened down as tight as they can possibly go, it's still <laughs> it's still somewhat loose on me, but I think it gets to the point where I actually 
uh, prefer the way it fits with all this stuff tighten, uh, tightened down all the way. And with having this panel back here enables me to carry that butt pack, okay? Uh, I believe the reason why these are so big is because these were designed to go over body armor. All right, so, you know, over a flak, over a plate carrier, things of that nature, which is great. I absolutely love that because I want to keep my gear as standard as possible. And I want to, you know, try to use the same gear as possible. Uh, so having a set of deuce gear that will enable me to just run, you know, if I want to plus it up. Uh, and what I mean by that is like, if I want to add body armor, I could literally take this plate carrier and a uh, plate carrier can go in conjunction with this web equipment. Uh, if I wanted to wear a flak vest, you know, with no pouches on it, put the flak on, this deuce gear to go over it. I come from an era where that was the norm, all right? We used to wear interceptor vest and then we'd put our deuce gear over the uh, interceptor vest uh, before guys really started to uh, attach pouches directly to the flaks themselves. So uh, as you guys can see, this H harness comes down and uh, has three attachment points where you can uh, adjust the gear to your specific liking and height. Um, I also have two grenade pouches towards the bottom here. And grenade pouches are great little utility pouches, guys. Uh, just because you don't have grenades doesn't mean you're, they're not useful, okay? As you can see, I've got a piece of electrical tape in there. On this side, I've got a compass, which, you know, with Molly and Pals, you know, compasses are easy to dummy cord so that, you know, if this were to fall out from extensive uh, use or crawling or whatever the case may be, you're not going to lose your compass. It's going to be retained to your gear. So I think grenade pouches are great little utility pouches. You can usually get them pretty cheap and, uh, you know, that's why I have them on my gear. So I wear them uh, all the way at the bottom. That way I'm trying to clear up and keep these uh, areas free. I was using a tourniquet up here on this left shoulder. Um, it just, it gets in the way guys. And uh, you know, I was tired of working around it with my pack strap. So I'm trying to free these up to keep uh, stuff off them so that you know nothing's getting in the way of pack straps and rifle butts and stuff like that. So I've moved that tourniquet down here. We'll talk about it again later. Um, Moving to the back side. So the back side is a, it's just a Molly style panel and I've attached a, a Blackhawk Camelback holder to it. And I've always loved these. I've used these since uh, at least Afghanistan. I don't think I had one of these in Iraq. Um, but you know, you can carry not just a Camelback in here. This kind of doubles as a mini backpack, all right? So you can keep it a uh, VS-17 air panel, you know, pyro, whatever the case may be. I've thrown PRC-152 radios in here and ran the handset out of it. Uh, they just, they're, they're great utilitarian uh, pieces of equipment, especially if you're not wearing a small, uh, you know, like a patrol pack in addition to this, all right? If this is your patrol pack, then you can put some stuff in there, um, no problem. All right, going back to the front here. So on the front, the whole gear itself attaches or connects with these uh, two fast X style buckles, okay? Um, so, you know, if these break on you over time with extensive use, you can just replace them. They're just your standard issue USGI buckles. On my left side, got two, two AR-15 magazine pouches. These particular ones are Blackhawk. There's other companies that make you know, pouches that are just like these, okay? On the right side, I have it just a single pouch for two AR-15 style magazines. And that enables me to carry on my web equipment six magazines. And then I have one magazine in my weapon for a total of seven, which seven uh, full AR-15 magazines, that is a standard combat load for an infantryman um, today. So uh, that's why I have that. That's why I have the amount of magazine pouches that I do up here, okay? Moving on the right side, this is just a, a utility pouch, I believe a 100 round saw pouch. Um, open this up and then you guys can see inside here, I've got my MVGs and I did a whole video on this MVG pouch. If you guys wanna check that out, essentially in this utility pouch is just a, uh, an Eagle Industries padded insert that you can put in there. Those are real cheap. You can get those anywhere. Check out that video I did. Okay, I've got my dummy cord. So this is just a small piece of 550 cord that I can take this uh, dummy cord on and I can attach it if, when I'm ready to pull my MVGs out and mount them on my Kevlar. You know, I can undo this, attach this to my you know, Kevlar itself. And then when I'm done using them on my Kevlar, undo these, take this uh, small carabiner and attach it to this piece of 550 cord. And there we go. Now my MVGs are dummy corded and I don't have to worry about them falling out on the move and, and getting lost, all right? And falling into the wrong hands. When I'm done, 
Go ahead and put the MVGs back inside the pouch. Stow that excess dummy cord. Secure the pouch. And there we go. All done, all right? Just to the right of that, I have a UD, UW Gear um, PRC-152 radio pouch. And I don't have a PRC-152, but I do have a, a Baofeng that's about the same size. Okay, and I can stick this in there. As you guys can see, it fits like a glove. All right. I can secure the pouch. All right, so the radio's in there. I've got a handset and I can run this handset. What I did in the uh, recon video is I just ran this handset down along the backside and then came up underneath the arm and then it would hook onto uh, my support side, right? So I had the handset right there at the ready uh, so that I could answer and hear radio calls and transmissions. So one shepherd has recently uh, gotten rid of their PRC-77 radios and they're going to a, essentially a clone of a PRC-152. So something similar to this and that's what they're gonna start running at one shepherd. So I thought it was a good idea to make sure I had uh, radio pouches attached to this, okay? Um, right next to that, I have a, this knife sheath. This is essentially a utilitarian knife sheath. It's not specifically designed for the knife I have in there, but it's designed for knives of its similar size, okay? Uh, so this particular knife sheath is made by Spec Ops brand, and I have used this knife sheath for years. I took it with me to Afghanistan. I wore it on my Marine Corps issue plate carrier over there, and uh, that's what I, I ran, and it's, I've used it ever since, and it's just been a great, fantastic knife sheath, as you guys can see, okay? Um, I think the only modifications I've had to make to this knife sheath ever is sticking some cardboard down inside there to help tighten it up on my particular type of knife I was using, whether it be this uh, marine fighter knife uh, made by Ontario Knife Company or uh, you know your typical K-Bar knife. It has a small pouch right here, which uh, I usually keep a Gerber in there, Gerber multi-tool, and it's just been a fantastic sheath. So that's what I've got there. All right, moving to the back. On each side, I have two canteen pouches. Now you guys will see on this Coyote version, I've got the newer Marine Corps canteen pouches, but I opted not to uh, use those on this because I wanted to keep this OD and I already had a bunch of Alice canteen pouches and Alice canteen pouches work. They work just fine. There's no need for me to go out and buy new stuff when I already had something that would work just fine. Uh, the only thing you need to get Alice to work in conjunction with Molly Pals type webbing is you gotta get these adapters, which you can go on eBay and find those. They're really cheap guys, not much, uh, not very expensive at all. You get those adapters and then that enables you to use any Alice equipment on your Molly equipment, okay? Um, in the back here, on this back panel, so if you are gonna run this back panel like I am, uh, I was able to put a butt pack. I like butt packs uh, because I like to carry uh, certain things. Regardless of the mission, there just seems to be, um, there's always standard equipment that I like to carry on virtually every type of mission, regardless of what it is. Uh, and on that, you know, I like to keep a spare field stripped uh, MRE. I like to carry, uh, you know, a poncho or a uh, like a Gore-Tex top, rifle cleaning gear, um, you know, things of that nature. I like to keep them in the buck pack so they're always on my gear, always neat there, you know, whatever the case may be, whatever might happen, I have that equipment and a butt pack is, is perfect to fit that type of stuff, okay? Attached to the butt pack on my right side of the butt pack is just a you know, standard IFAC, okay? Alice style IFAC. Um, if you use an Alice style butt pack, it's gonna have the Alice clips on the sides anyways, okay? So you don't need any type of adapters. Uh, so, and then you guys can see I took uh, some small carabiners and attached them to the, what normally would have attached to Alice suspenders. That's how I rigged that up. Uh, moving on, again, another Alice canteen pouch on that side. I, then I have, I always like running a dump pouch. Dump pouches have been, uh, very handy for me over the years, training at One Shepherd, whether that's just 
you know, throwing a, you know, a, a camera in there or something else. Just, I've always enjoyed having these uh, larger dump pouches, uh, particularly the ones that can just be folded up like this. Very similar to the issued Marine Corps one, which I'll show you on the uh, Coyote version of this gear. Uh, but I always like running dump pouches, guys, and uh, particularly the large ones. I know, I know there's like the little small net ones and stuff. I'm, I'm not a big fan of those. I like these bigger dump pouches. Uh, so that's what I'm running on here. Uh, right above that, I've moved the tourniquet there, so now it's on my left side. I, f I know I can reach this uh, with both hands. Um, I think this is going to be a good spot for it, and uh, I'm going to try running it here and, and see how I like it going forward. So that is pretty much the uh, the gear in a nutshell. So I have the OD one for one shepherd, and then I got the uh, Coyote one for Winter Forge. And you guys can see right now that it is set up the exact same. I got my MVG pouch, okay? Uh, see, this pouch is holding my uh, PVS-14s. Um, same style of rigging up for dummy cord. Same magazine allotment. All right, here is the Marine Corps issue dump pouch. All right, got it set up over here. Right above that's a tourniquet. Grenade pocket or grenade pouches on the uh, H suspenders. On the back, again, a Camelback uh, holder. I got a. Now this was a a Molly butt pack. I know guys guys have routinely asked me uh, where can they get this butt pack, and I believe I bought this off of Optics Planet, but it was years ago, guys. I don't know what company it is. Figure it out. Look for it. That's what I did. That's how I got it. So. Uh, looking for the gear itself is, is half the fun, okay? So, uh, but it's kind of an Alice style uh, butt pack, but with Molly. Um, on one side, I've got a uh, smoke grenade pouch, and then the other side, I've got my, uh, you know, your, my IFAC attached to it. If you guys want to see this gear in more in depth on like how this is packed out, watch my three day reconnaissance video that I did um, not too long ago and you'll get a more up close look on how this gear is all situated for a, a specific three day recon mission. Well, that's it guys, it completes my uh, overview of this Eagle Industries H harness. And uh, as you can see, I've gone to great lengths to make sure that my web equipment here mirrors each other, all right? So that regardless of whether I'm wearing my OD variant or my Coyote variant, it's the exact same, it feels the same, it looks the same, all my gear is situated the same. Um, and that way it's just a matter of transitioning gear from the time of year. I would use this web equipment during this particular time of the year when it's, you know, very, very green out. And then I'd transition to this in the fall and winter time where the vegetation's dead and there's a lot more tans and browns. Um, so if you guys got any other questions, um, you know, post them in the comment section. I'll do my best to answer them. Uh, I've done a lot of videos, guys, over the years. Many of your questions are probably already answered in a review video that I've already done, okay? If you wanna see uh, specific gear loadouts on these particular web uh, equipments, uh, check out the recon, three-day recon video I did uh, not too long ago, and it gives you a little bit better idea of like what is carried in this web gear uh, for a re three-day reconnaissance mission. Uh, also, I obviously I wore this for the uh, short film, the uh, the recon. That's the name of the short film. Check that out. You guys can see how the gear looks and how it sits on my body as I move. So appreciate you guys tuning in. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.